And welcome back to the Power Breakfast Show. Now we look at what's making headlines in the paper this morning, uh, the second uh, day of the week, Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. Uh, on my panel this morning, I have a uh, member of parliament for Kimilili, Mr. Did Didmas Baraza. Uh, we were expecting to have with us also a member of parliament, Homer Bay County, Gladys Wanga, but she has uh, since sent an apology uh, owing to and an urgent uh, engagement that she has very early this morning. So uh, we will be moving on with uh, Moshimo Baraza. And I quickly got what's making headlines in the papers this morning. The Daily Nation, puzzle of Raila role derails unity talks. Now, what public position should this opposition leader and his deputy Kalonzo Musioka hold if talks between them and the president take off? These are some of the questions that are being asked uh, uh, as uh, nobody knows exactly. No one seems to know as... Uh, reason has been swallowed by a cloud of mistrust between NASA and Jubilee. Now, diplomats, meanwhile, according to the Daily Nation, want you to decide what roles the two should assume. More on this, page four and page five of the Daily Nation. This amid the meeting among the principals of uh, uh, the NASA coalition yesterday, which apparently uh, will be continuing today as they try to uh, for formulate a uh, way forward uh, ahead of the supposed swearing in of uh, Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musyoka's People's uh, Assembly Presidents on 30th of this month. Another interesting story uh, hinted on the front page and covered in depth on page 9 of the Daily Nation. Shame of mass failure at Kenya School of Law. Now more than half of students at a college uh, have flunked by examinations in the last seven years. Quite interesting. Coming on the backdrop of uh, what we had last week where apparently many or almost half or more than half of those who went for teacher training in uh, teacher training colleges in the country also flunked in their examinations uh, a cause for concern for permanent principal secretary uh, basic education Dr. Belio Kipsang and everybody else in the sector. Also of interest uh, hinted on the front page and covered in depth at the back page is a Sonko now fighting to block creditors in a 60 billion Row. Nairobi County has gone to court seeking to temporarily stop all payments to its creditors amounting to nearly 60 billion shillings. Now in court documents filed yesterday, the county uh, governor Gideon Sonko and the county leadership says the huge debts accrued from previous administrations can't be settled owing to government laws on appropriation of funds. More on this uh, back page of the Daily Nation. Page 2. Sad story, no respite for poor families, as millers warn that unga prices will go up. Now, two kilogram packet of maize flour is predicted to reach 200 shillings by March this year. Now, apparently this is because uh, the subsidized stocks that were given to millers uh, have since been dwindled, according to a communication that was issued by the uh, Cabinet Secretary, Minister for Agriculture, uh, uh, Mr. Bett, recently. Also on uh, the second page of the Daily Nation, state criticized for frequent uh, fuel prices increase. The government yesterday came under attack for the persistent increase in fuel prices with a section of leaders saying this will raise the cost of doing business in the country. Other stories also making headlines is Raila's role, headache derails unity talks, uh, page four, like I had mentioned earlier, and of course... Uh, uh, page 5, NASA says we cannot discuss economy. United States Ambassador to Kenya Robert Godex meeting with the National Assembly Minority Leader John Buddy on Monday last week was intended to be a quiet courtesy call. The only problem with that desire is that it's not known, it was not known to parliamentary staff while journalists had been invited. Apparently in the meeting it turned out that uh, Moshimo Ambadi said we cannot talk about the economy at a time when we still have uh, an impasse on the leadership as far as the opposition is concerned. Now, also, of interest, page 5, leaders set to meet again today on seats. Um, this is the NASA leadership, as I had hinted earlier uh, on the previous story. Page 6, poll petitions. Taita Taveta and Wajia governors are fighting to stay in leadership positions. Now, yesterday, Taita Taveta governor Granton Samboja got a reprieve when uh, uh, one of the petitions uh, challenging his election uh, uh, in the Void Court was dismissed. Uh, apparently, uh, the Wajia governor, whose uh, election had been uh, uh, squashed, uh, Governor Mohammed Abdi uh, went to court and uh, has appealed against the ruling which was uh, uh, issued by the High Court, nullifying his victory earlier. Other stories also making headlines in the papers today. Page 
9, quite interesting, the story about call for reforms in the law sector as more law students fail their bar exams. You will find this in empirical data on page 8 in a table showing which year how many students uh, did exams, how many passed, how many failed, what is the failure rate, and uh, uh, how many uh, lawyers are in the system of those who passed uh, or those who failed uh, in the exams. Um, the Chief Justice, Justice David Maraga on page 11, is concerned about uh, the pace cases of petty crimes that are on the rise. Uh, this he said when he was launching, uh, launching a committee on criminal justice reforms. He's concerned about the high number of poor people who are arrested and jailed compared to rich offenders. Maraga said the number of poor in conflict with the law was, quote, alarmingly disproportionate to that of the well-to-do. He added that many of the poor offenders find themselves in trouble for fairly minor offenses, such as lack of business licenses, being drunk and disorderly, and creating disturbance, while the rich do not find themselves in court and in jails for heavier crimes, uh, according to this story. Also on uh, the Daily Nation, reclamation of sea land threatens island status. Now this is page 12 of the Daily Nation. Um, the Land Commission now wants that the United Nations could delist the coastal city of Mombasa due to the increased illegal reclamation of sea land. That's and more on page 12 of the Daily Nation. Page 14 has... Uh, the editorials ensure sagacity in Deputy Governor Bill, the domina, uh, dominant disc, uh, discourse since last week's uh, abrupt resignation of Nairobi Deputy Governor Patrick Igade, is the, uh, uh, shows that there is need for a legal framework on a succession plan in county uh, governments. Back page of uh, the Daily Nation, Sonko moves to block the 60 billion payout, which uh, uh, we had hinted at, and of course... Um, uh, this is of interest to schools. Now, the government has promised that parents will not pay for the repainting of school buses and vans following the directive by the Ministry of Education that uh, vehicles that uh, service schools need to have a uniform yellow color. Acting Education Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi issued the directive on bus colors last week. The standard. Front page. NASA ready for talks with Jubilee, but on set terms. Now this uh, amidst the meeting that was there between Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musyoka, Moses Wet uh, uh, Musalia Mudavadi and Moses Wetangula. And of course the meeting that goes on later today. Uh, also on the front page, Sonko rules out dialogue with Igade. Nairobi governor argues that Igade's exit is not a jubilee affair. And the city government has technocrats who will work with him and deliver uh, the promises that they made. Also on uh, the standard this morning, page 3, deadly attack on KDF marked in low-key event. Now yesterday was two years since the worst military loss. Uh, families uh, joined uh, uh, friends and relatives uh, in uh, memory of the loved ones that uh, we lost as a country, our Gala sons, two years ago in the El Ade attack uh, in Somali. Apparently the uh, standard says the event uh, was commemorated in a very low-key event. The story about uh, bu school buses having to be painted the yellow, it's now uh, uh, the cause for a disagreement again between the unions and the ministry because unions are now rejecting the directive on color of school buses on page 4 of the standard. Teachers unions have questioned the timing and financial impact of a directive that school buses be repainted yellow and labeled in black letters. Now this, even as uh, the Minister of Education says, parents will not have to bear the cost of uh, having to uh, have their buses repainted. Now, thanks to two million shillings from a Forex Bureau, this incident happened. Um, uh, apparently, these thugs, uh, gangsters walked into a bureau on Sunday afternoon and said they wanted to exchange thousands of uh, US dollars into Kenya shillings. And uh, they ended up taking away the money with them. This and more can be found on the Crimes Report on page 7 of the Daily Nation. Of course, uh, uh, page 8, sorry, page 7 of the standard, on course, page 8 of the standard has a story about poll petitions. Court now dismisses uh, Granton Samboja's, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, um, the case challenging the election of Granton Samboja. And of course, there's a story about Sunkuli accuses poll agency of vote fixing. Former Kenyan envoy to China, Julia Sunkuli, yesterday told a court that results declaring Gideon Conchella, winner of the 8th parliamentary, 8th August parliamentary elections, uh, were 
doctored. That and more can be found on page 8 of uh, the standard uh, newspaper. Page 10, MCA's fight, over uh, fight after disagreeing over 100 million airstrip project. This is uh, uh, somewhere in uh, Kericho County. Now that is just about... Uh, what we could look at in the Daily Nation and the Standard this morning. And I'm now joined, like I said earlier, by a member of parliament for Kimi, uh, Kimi Lili, Didmas Baraza. Morning, uh, Moshimo Baraza. Morning. I look at uh, what's happening on the uh, news front today. Of course, I would not shy away from discussing the attack on French school Kamusinga. It's a case in court. What's your opinion? I think Teachers were transferred. Apparently, some of your colleague leaders are saying uh, there was no consultation. Uh, even myself, I uh, was opposed to the transfer, uh, to the not with the transfer, but I was opposed also to uh, the person who, the caliber of a person who came to took over the very means of French school camp singer. But then uh, the police action to prefer charges against uh, the the four MCS who apparently went to be evict the principal from school. Uh, I think they were within uh, their, their mandate, uh, that is the power of police, they can arrest depending on uh, whether they think somebody broke the law or not. But however, what I would say is that uh, uh, going forward, we should not just uh, turn to uh, police actions and the prosecutions as the solutions. Uh, what we will want to see in the future is that uh, wherever you have such kind of a, of a standoff, uh, then you bring the stakeholders together, the MCAs and the principals themselves and the managers of the education sector together to have dialogue so that we are able to solve uh, the problem. Because for the principal to really uh, steer the school to greater heights, he needs the support, uh, the political goodwill from uh, the church, uh, from the church which, is, which is a sponsor, uh, from political leaders who, whether you like it or not, they are very important as a stakeholder. A member of parliament uh, pays school fees in terms of bursaries. We support the development uh, infrastructure of the school. So I think in terms of uh, uh, dialoguing, it's very, very important. Do you think they were ch uh, uh, channeling or taking their disagreement to the right place? What is the, the chief principal's offense? Accepting his employer's orders to go to that school? I think, like I said, uh, this directive uh, is, is de of delocalizing uh, the management of secondary schools. It's a good directive, but it should be done in consultation with the stakeholders. If you read the Education Act and various uh, statutes, various uh, regulations that govern education in this country, you will see that uh, political leaders who represent the community, and the community itself and the church they are very important stakeholder of the school. But uh, the laws that you refer to and the regulations and everything else also give the mandate of employing, appointing, transferring, and dismissing of teachers to teacher service commission. Yeah, I agree. But uh, every, everything that has to be done, it has to be done in the consultations, even if the law exists. And uh, some of the directives that uh, the Ministry of Education has given uh, you find out that uh, some of them had not gone through the uh, through the, the, the public uh, scrutiny. So, so your beef is with the employer, the ministry. The ministry, yes, not, not the teacher, not the commission. principal. Yes. So why attack a principal? I condemn the attacking of the principal, uh, but I think uh, what I said, uh, I, will, I want to repeat what I've just said here, that the attack of the principal was wrong, but again. Um, Prosecuting uh, the MCS is, is not enough. It should be taken a notch higher by way of uh, the MCS should uh, sit down uh, with ourselves and uh, the managers of education in Bugoma County in, uh, in this country so that we come up with an amicable solution. Some of the things that are being said as to why the new principal of French School Camp Singer is not uh, the best person to be at the helm of French School Camp Singer can be addressed. For example, we are being told that uh, where uh, Mr. Maina is coming from, uh, that the highest uh, main score that he has ever posted is about 5.9. Uh, so, I mean, those, these are things which so can it, be... Was it him sitting the exams? 
Uh, that's why, of course, uh, people, it's not him setting the exams, but they no, say... No, it's him taking the exams, that he scored 5.9. When you are the principal of a school, you take, the head either of the you take credit or you take whatever is being said. You are the person to defend the record. And uh, usually the performance of schools everywhere is uh, the praise is taken over by, by the principal. So are you saying any school that has good results, take for example um, Friends School Kamusinga before Mr. Maina went there, if they were posting good results, those are the results of the principal and not the stakeholders? The principal uh, takes credit because he's the captain of, uh, of the school. Thank you. What and, about uh, the stakeholders? Uh, the stakeholders, uh, you see, there is no way that a school can begin to post uh, good results for an overnight. It's a journey that uh, it takes some time, and uh, this journey uh, also involves the parents, and they are concerned also if uh, the school begins to drop. So if Charles Odiambo is coming from a school where the best score was 3.1, is that Charles Odiambo's results or the stakeholders' results, including Charles Odiambo? It is the responsibility of uh, Charles Odiambo to ensure that uh, he adds value to the students that are in his school. And we are not saying that uh, they should get a mean score of uh, 10.9 or 9.6 or whatever, but uh, in terms of the grades that uh, the students got when they were in primary schools, before joining his school, they should either increase or maintain or not, does not deteriorate. For example, if you got a diplas in, uh, in KCP. Thank you, thank you, Mwishuma Barada. So you agree with me that you do not look at a result at the face value. Absolutely. You look at everybody behind it, you look at the yes. entry behavior of the children. Yes. And you should use this to judge a principal who is posted to yours. Absolutely. You should not use the results to judge that principal. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We move on. Page 2 of the standard, no respect for families, uh, poor families, uh, as Miller's warn of uh, increase in UNGA prices. Now, you are a Jubilee member of Parliament. One of the biggest uh, campaign slogans for Jubilee was that they are going to ensure that the cost of living is uh, lowered for Nainchi. Actually, the government even spurred uh, UNGA that Nainchi were getting it at 90 shillings. And now they are saying here, according to Miller's, by end of March it will go back to 200. It is uh, very unfortunate uh, because where I come from, Unga is a very uh, precious uh, commodity. And uh, if uh, the price of Unga is going to go up, uh, it's going to affect so many, so many Kenyans and uh, so many people. Uh, and I think uh, what I can say is that um, when the president is reconstituting his government, I think the person who is in charge of the Ministry of Agriculture should be evaluated based on these kind of things. Because I believe it's the responsibility of the cabinet sector in charge of agriculture uh, and all his or her technocrats within the ministry to come up with the robust uh, programs that will ensure that this country has uh, food security. Uh, and uh, addressing food security is very simple. You look at the amount of money the government has pumped in the, in the, in the food sector, the Galana irrigation schemes, a lot of money. And, and I think uh, uh, what we need to do as a country is that we need to enact laws. For example, the government has been uh, on record saving uh, quite some money. We've had the members of parliament uh, and other civil servants having their salaries uh, uh, cut, allowances uh, withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, this money should go into a particular account so that uh, in the event of uh, things like fuel prices uh, escalating, things like uh, you know, the price of unga escalating, I think the government will be able to meet uh, what comes over and above what uh, the Kenyans are used to buying. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we must also accept that it comes a time when also government uh, needs also to operate uh, at a loss and uh, have the brunt of uh, uh, either th other things that are going up that affect the prices of things in this country. Mm -hmm. If you look at it that way, in a positive manner, then you are able to get, uh, to get a solution. I would want to see government is uh, a development partner for Kenyans, mm -hmm. like uh, an, an insurance for Kenyans. That if Kenyans are used to buying a price of unga at uh, 90 shillings, and uh, maybe because of some other factors which were not properly mitigated by the ministry officials, uh, whom I think also they should be put to task 
to show cause why uh, their measures are never, are never, are never, 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 never make any sense. We've seen uh, them traveling out of the country, attending workshops all over the countries. You've seen them uh, in uh, closed door meetings with a view that. So we uh, should see action. Uh, now. We should see actions, uh, actions, and uh, whatever thing that they do, uh, we must have. Uh, Kenyans must have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the measurable metrics as to whether whatever they put in a place is efficient or not. Turning on to the cost of fuel, apparently the state is being crit uh, criticized for frequent fuel price increases. Now the government yesterday came under attack, this is page 2 of the standard uh, of the Daily Nation, uh, for the persistent increase in fuel prices, the section of leaders saying this will raise the cost of doing business in the country. Now members of parliament, your colleagues, have warned that they would consider amending the Energy Regulatory Commission Act to align the regulator with the needs and aspirations of consumers. They seem to think that ERC is not doing what it should do. But ERC says, on the same story, they are attributing the high prices to an increase in a raft of taxes that the commodity is usually subjected to. But, but, but I think uh, ERC, they are becoming uh, crowded because uh, their mandate is to regulate uh, fuel prices, among other things. And, and I think uh, it is within their duty to foresee any action by other government departments that will uh, have a positive or uh, negative impact on the, on the prices of fuel and either issue an advisory. But we don't have to sit and wait. Uh, the government implements other measures, uh, including taxes or anything else. Uh, then later on you come out and say that uh, we are having a... Uh, uh, they increased in fuel prices because of uh, an action that was taken uh, by some other government department. Mm -hmm. I think ARC must learn to work with other government agencies. They must also try to analyze uh, any other decisions that are being made by government in, in terms of uh, looking at them, uh, how they will affect uh, the, the, the prices of, uh, of, petroleum, and the, of petroleum and the fuel prices in this country. Uh, they need to foresee this. They need to carry out what we call uh, a risk analysis of all other government decisions. You are calling on ERC to be more proactive. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you look at the budget that is allocated to them, uh, I think even uh, to me, I feel even ERC should just be uh, disbanded and uh, just seconded to the, into the ministry of, uh, into some ministry as, as a department. Then, then uh, how do they operate? Because they will lose the autonomy. It doesn't matter. We have, uh, they can just be even be a board. You know, a commission is, uh, they have uh, too much powers, which apparently they are still behaving uh, as if there is a board. Before ERC was given the mandate to regulate fuel prices, energy costs, we had situations where one petrol station would sell fuel at 10 times, or I mean, sorry, uh, one ten percent above a next petrol station. There was exploitation of consumers. I want to tell you for free, even now, uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, even the, the quality of fuel that is sold by some petrol stations is wanting. Some mix petrol with uh, paraffin with a view of uh, making uh, unscrupulous profits. And there is the responsibility of, uh, of, uh, of ERC to flush out those kind of... Uh, and they have. Heads. We have seen adverts in the papers, in the daily. An everywhere. advert is never enough. What is enough is uh, prosecution. A closure of some petrol stations. They have even fined uh, them. Uh, fining them, uh, those kind of petrol stations, and even naming and shaming them so that Kenyans can know that uh, in these particular fuel stations, uh, the, the, the fuel that they sell is not, uh, is not clean. Uh, they have those kind of, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, nanguns that Mwishimu, they Mwishimu, are you, are you exhibiting things? the normal Kenyan trend where if I'm not happy with you, I call for you to go? Uh, not necessarily that I call for you to go, but uh, you know, you look at uh, the complaints. We've had very many scenarios, uh, very many occasions. The fuel price is not stable in this country, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't even, even at times uh, motorists are affected because you go to a particular town. You are told there is no particular fuel, there is no petrol, there is no diesel. <coughs> But uh, not that there is no diesel, but uh, these people are just holding. It's there, but we have speculations. Uh, apparently, like uh, some of the institutions in this country, ARC seem to work with some cartels in the fuel sector. So when they know that uh, fuel is just about to go up, 
you fuel is depleted uh, in the, some particular towns of this country. Okay, so now you want the Ministry of Agriculture to be proactive. You want ERC to stand up, ship up or ship out. Absolutely. Let's go to the education and careers. First it was KCSE. There is what was termed as mass failure because of the uh, uh, number of students who managed to get uh, marks that would take them to university, just about 70,000 out of a possible 600,000 who took the exams last year. Then came last week a report by, that quoted the Principal Secretary and Minister of Basic Education, Belio, Dr. Belio Kipsang, about mass failure in teacher training colleges. And now today, we are compounded with the calls for reforms as more, than, uh, more law students fail their by exams. The Daily Nation says, between 2000 and, 2000 and 2009 and 2016, out of the 16,000 students who sat for the by examinations administered by the Council of Legal Education, only 7,530 passed, less than 50%. 8,549 failed. I think uh, we need to change our way of doing things in terms of uh, before you introduce uh, a kind of uh, a change of doing things in an uh, education sector, you've got to look at uh, how was the previous uh, system wa wa working, was it effective? And the only way to evaluate whether uh, the education system, the previous system was working or not, is to look at the, whether the Kenyan graduates, uh, uh, the Kenyan uh, graduates, the Kenyan education, who are actually the product of the education sector, whether they are marketable or not. And uh, if you move around the region, you go to Dubai, uh, you will find that there are so many Kenyans who are working in Dubai, engineers. If you go to the U.S., you will find that Kenyan graduates who are working in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the U.S., in Europe. Uh, you move around this town, uh, you go to Kigali, the most cleanest town in Africa. The, some of the buildings that you see, they have actually been um, designed by the Kenyan architects, uh, have been supervised by the Kenyan, uh, Kenyan engineers. So in terms of uh, the Kenyan graduates' uh, acceptability in the job market, uh, there were no questions about that. About that. And also maybe you look at uh, the way the lawyers are performing in the in the in the in maybe in courts in their various legal practice across uh, the region they are respected i've seen uh, uh kenyan lawyers going to handle high profile cases in neighboring countries and uh, once you are completely satisfied that the previous systems uh, uh, was acceptable then you can only introduce a few things that will be better uh, those kind of things because uh, what hap the problem that we have in this country that we seem to borrow practice from other countries and uh, replicate them within our own systems but without understanding that the dynamics of countries are different i mean uh, the way maybe things are done in america is different from the way things are done in kenya mm. we are currently having uh, problems with some sections of the constitution of kenya because uh, apparently some chapters were copy pasted uh, from countries where we didn't even understand the, the scenario of, of those countries now listen to this according to the daily nation page nine the report points out that the 5,298 students who failed their bar examinations are actively involved in employment in law firms, county governments, universities, among others. I agree. I agree completely. And I think uh, what we should do as a country, uh, we, there is what we call uh, moderation in terms of uh, uh, when you are marking an exam. And we should be guided by, for example, uh, how many uh, advocates do we need to uh, have, uh, you know, being uh, uh, churned out, every, churned out every, every year after every other So once we get years. the number, we fail the rest. Uh, once we get the number, you know, you do moderation. When I was in high school, uh, at times, uh, when I, I, would, I would score 71% in, uh, in physics, and that was an A play. Uh, but I would score about 95% in uh, social education and ethics, and that would be uh, an A minus. So, so if, you if, do if, call moderation. if you scored 26% and you are the best, do you think that should be an A? Uh, not necessarily an A, but it should be about maybe a, maybe, maybe a B minus or a B play. Why not a D? Because that, it, that is what it is. That's why I'm saying uh, when you are marking exams, you are the what we call moderation. Moderation is that uh, because 
When a uh, high uh, number of uh, students fails exams, it points out that uh, the education system is deteriorating. Because uh, uh, you are actually killing the country. You are killing the future of, of, of the country. And, and, uh, and there are so many things which can make your students fail exams. So because a higher number of students didn't make it to the university this year and last year, you think the ministry is killing the education sector? Uh, absolutely, something must be done. We also need to bring Kenyans along the way. So where are we going to take the, the children who fail exams? Where are we going to take them? And, and I think... Uh, what is failing exams to you? Failing exams is, uh, I mean, is prescribed by the marking systems. Like you see, maybe uh, some say from between this grade is excellent, to this grade is satisfactory, to this grade is poor, you see. So the failure of exams is prescribed by the systems grading system, by the government's uh, grading systems itself. So those who score between a particular band, they are, seem to, they are seen to have failed. You know, when you go for employment in some other country, they even specify that if you are coming with a Kenyan university degree, you must have gotten a, a second class uh, uh, upper division and above, meaning those who get a second class a lower division and below uh, yeah, may no. have failed in, the, in, the, in, the, in their respective uh, career. Mushma, degree. with all this, and considering the fact that you are a member of uh, the Jubilee Party, what would you say you have done to help the situation? You have blamed the agriculture sector, you have blamed the energy sector, and now you're blaming the education sector, and yet you're part of the government. I think uh, people make, uh, they do not understand uh, uh, properly. The role of a member of parliament is clearly defined. I am not a cabinet secretary. I am not the spokesperson of the Jubilee administration. Uh, I support uh, the Jubilee's uh, vision in terms of uh, taking this country forward. Uh, but uh, a government is being assembled. This is my first time in the National Assembly. A government is being assembled. And my support for this government is that uh, to deliver on its uh, mandate, uh, whatever they promise to Kenyans, because I was a team player. Uh, we moved around uh, our region all together setting the agenda of Jubilee, which to me it was a good agenda, and I will wait for the government to be assembled so that uh, uh, we give them political goodwill to move forward in terms of uh, uh, if there are some uh, laws that need to be enacted, if there are some existing laws that need to be amended to ensure they achieve on the on the, on the, on the pre-election pledge. Uh, I will be able to support this government in, that, in, in line with my mandate as a member, member of parliament. But the fact that uh, a member of parliament is in NASA, it doesn't mean that that person uh, uh, doesn't care about what this government does because it is, is a jubilee. How, how, uh, clear. Uh, actually, my question was, how about the fact that you represent the people of Kimilili, the people you say cherish Unga, the people you say consume power, the people you say take their children to school and need quality education. What have they sent you to parliament to say amidst all this now? Yeah, we will, uh, we will uh, offer suggestions which I think uh, the government should uh, take up. And uh, most importantly is to put line ministries uh, on toss in terms of uh, being proactive, uh, foreseeing uh, the crisis, the food crisis uh, that will come in uh, five years, in one year, both short-term and long-term uh, uh, risks that uh, will affect the food security in this country protecting the food baskets that we have uh, in this country, offering uh, subsidies uh, to fertilizers and uh, fertilizers, providing an enabling environment for agriculture to flourish because when we have uh, uh, high agricultural uh, productivity, then we are sure that uh, the prices for, uh, for unga is going to be stabilized. And of course, fighting the cartels in the agricultural sector, uh, because I usually, I, I, I tend to think that most of the problems we have in this country, they are created by some cartels who want to benefit from, uh, from uh, those kind of uh, confusions uh, so that they can get now an opportunity to either to sneak in uh, cheap uh, maize from neighboring countries, from Mexico, and uh, when they sell it, they sell it uh, even more than uh, how much money we... You, because at times there are some things that we may even fail to understand. How can maize from Mexico uh, cost cheaper than maize from our own maize. 
So when the farmers are selling their maize, they sell it at a very cheap price. But when it comes to buying them from cartels, they are selling them at That's very exactly high. Right. I, we need to regulate because in my own place where I come from, you find even a, a korokoro of, of maize uh, will retail at about 30 shillings. But after some six, seven months, the same same gorogoro is being ATC. sold at right uh, 120. I think we need to look at uh, the same same maze. Didmas Baraza, <laughs> member of parliament yeah. for community. Thank you very much, Mushmua, for sharing with us your insights this morning right. on what's yeah. making headlines. Just, just about all that we had for you in the news review segment this morning. Joy Mudengi is up next with grooming and later on the man cave. Power Breakfast continues. My name is Charles Odiambo.